you know, it's funny how things work out. On September 24, I was in uh, Riverton, Wyoming at a uh, uh, repair shop called Riverton RV, and I've got a whole separate story on that. Good people, and uh, I'm in the process of getting some warranty work uh, done, and they needed to order parts and such, so they needed, they needed me to come in and um, let them take a look at my uh, fifth wheel before... I take off and go where I am now. I'm sending you this from Cody, Wyoming, and I've got some stories about Cody, but that's not the focus of this video. On the way out of Riverton, my plan was to drive about 50 miles up to Thermopolis, which from the name you might guess there are hot springs there, and I was going to spend a few days in Thermopolis and relax and hit the hot springs. When I got there, I found the uh, RV park I was planning on staying in it's kind of small, uh, and I don't mean that I'm particular about having a lot of land. I'm just concerned about being able to get the rig in and out, and um, I'm not so sure I was going to be able to do that, and the RV uh, park owner was not around. So it was a little late in the day. Uh, it was around 4.30 in the afternoon on the 24th, but it was warm. It was in the 80s, like 82 degrees. So I figured, you know what, I'll just keep going. And uh, maybe I'll make it part of the way or all the way up to Buffalo Bill State Park in Cody, where I am now. Well, uh, about an hour, hour and a half later, I, I found out that there was a town in between Thermopolis and Cody, about 50 miles up the road from Thermopolis. And uh, that's called Matitsi. Um, Matitsi is a small town, about 380 people. Uh, in fact, as I arrived, half the town was literally walking across the street because they were having a uh, fireman's uh, dinner for the whole town, uh, which was really cool. So um, I stayed at the Oasis RV Park and uh, Motel, and um, the RV Park's an older RV park. It's a, it's a good place. Uh, you got to be a little careful negotiating <coughs> around the trees, but... Um, but, um, you know, once, uh, once I got around the trees and I was, uh, you know, set up and then stayed a couple days, I discovered uh, the uh, first night I was there, after my free dinner from town, that uh, the motel owners are great people. And they told me about a ghost town called Kerwin. And all I had to hear was ghost town. Actually, I saw a flyer on the wall. Uh, I was like, well, this looks interesting. So it turns out the town of Kerwin, that's what I'm going to tell you about here. The town of Kerwin is about 30, 35 miles uh, southwest of Matiti. It is in the middle of nowhere. It's really remote. And um, you drive a road that starts out paved, goes gravel, and ends up being ba basically rock and boulder. Um, as you work your way from about 5,800 feet to about 9,500 feet before you get to the town itself. Now let me share a couple of details with you because you're about to see my visit to Kerwin. This is a town where there are some buildings that remain. It has been somewhat preserved from its original days. And I think that part of the reason for that, what makes it different from, for example, a place like Teller City, if you saw my video on Teller City uh, in Colorado, that was accessible enough to the people in Walden and, and Gould within Jackson County that they went and raided uh, the homes and took the lumber and took the stuff inside. Uh, here, on the other hand, uh, you're quite a ways away from Matitsi, and it's not an easy drive, even on today's, in today's vehicles and today's roads. Uh, I can only imagine what it was like a century ago. Here's the story on Kerwin. In 1885, gold was discovered and the town of Kerwin began. Now this is up the head rivers of the Wind River. Uh, so it's up in the mountains. It's surrounded by 12,000 some, some odd foot peaks. The um, town was founded or formed in 1885. Um, there was a depression going on at the time that kept, kept growth slow. And by 1894, the Shoshone River Mining Company, uh, which had formed, uh, by 1897, they got the first shipment of gold ore uh, packed out by mule. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, that's probably not the most cost-effective way to do things. 
and unfortunately the mining company was not making great money. Now in 1902 there were several mining companies that uh, decided to engage in extensive mining exploration in the surrounding mountains so the town of Kerwin grew to its peak around 1905 of about 200 residents. Now the town had a hotel, a sawmill, post office, stores, and a boarding house but interestingly, and unlike a lot of other towns that grew up like it, there was no cemetery, no saloons, and no brothels. My guess, and it doesn't say this in the information I'm reviewing here, is that maybe the founders were Mormons. Uh, there seems to be a pretty strong Mormon influence in this area. I'm just a, a little bit south and east, uh, well, Matitsi is a little south and east of Yellowstone National Park, and it's not far from the Oregon Trail. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you're dealing with a fairly conservative, uh, moral population, hence the lack of the saloons and the uh, brothels. And I guess for a cemetery, they must have used Matitsi. Uh, Matitsi founded, I believe, 20 or 30 years earlier. This is not a real, you know, old area. Well, in 1907, there was a brutal snowstorm. And according to the written information, they got 100 feet of snow in eight days. Now, I, I, you know, I studied meteorology. I don't see that happening. Um, I could see a avalanche, which they do record did happen, that could have buried parts of the town in 100 feet of snow. That's possible. The actual accumulation in eight days, I would say 100 to 200 inches is probably believable uh, in that area. And remember, you're up at 9,500 feet, so it, it very well could have happened. Uh, well, bottom line, after that occurred, people kind of lost their taste for being out there. And between that and the fact that there wasn't a lot of money being made, uh, they bailed. They left town. Well, um, by October of 1920, the mail service had been discontinued. It was given up to Matiti. Uh, there was an attempt in the 20s to revive it. And uh, there was a group that bought and created something called the Double D Dude Ranch. Um, that's about six miles below Kerwin. And uh, in 1937, as a matter of fact, even Amelia Earhart, uh, you know, the fame of flying across the Atlantic and disappearing, um, she had a cabin being built there, and they stopped building it uh, when, or over the Pacific, and they stopped building it when she disappeared uh, in hopes of her reappearance someday. Um, the later history of this town, it was purchased. It was retained in its original or semi-original condition um, and purchased by American Metals Climax Corporation in the early 60s, another mining operation. But uh, environmentalists really spoke up in the 60s and, and shot down that idea. And it was uh, the, the, the um, company donated it to the U.S. Forest Service in 1992. I drove up on September 25. The video you're about to see was taken on September 25, and I arrived at about 11 o'clock in the morning. It was snowing, and the snow got harder and heavier as I was there. As a matter of fact, I was concerned about not being able to get out. I even ran into a couple of fellows who were working, uh, I guess, for one of the local universities or for the state because they're doing uh, snow telemetry. And what that basically is, is they were uh, climbing up onto one of the mountains to uh, set up gauges that would measure snow depth so they could know how much moisture was going to be collecting for the season. Um, the 25th of September was the first day, or the 24th was actually the first night where it had snowed. And there was up on the mountains probably already about three, four, five inches of snow up at uh, you know, 11,000, 12,000 feet. Uh, however, while I was there, you'll see exactly how rapidly things progressed. So my audio is, you know, you know I'm kind of in a mind frame of like, okay, I want to see this and I want to share it, but I also want to get out of here. <laughs> so that's what you're about to see, and I hope you enjoy it. And, um, you know, to me, it's a piece of history that really is exceptional. Um, Matitsi is a very small town. It's got a couple of saloons. Uh, honestly, I didn't eat either. I walked in, and uh, the proprietor of one of them has her cigarette sitting right next to the grill. And I'm like, well, this is a throwback to 40 years ago. And the other one I walked in, and I was going to have lunch, and they told me that the cook didn't show up that day. <laughs> so there was no food, just booze. Um, so it's, it's a neat little town, but it is little. 
There is no grocery store. There is Conoco. That's the only thing that you have in Matitsi. And you're about to see what's in Kerwin. All right, with that said, enjoy the remainder. Welcome to the town of Kerwin. There's not much left here. There's just a couple of markers showing some information about what the town was. It was a mining town. It was at its peak around 1906. And a big storm in 1907 pretty much knocked it out. I read in one article that it was 100 feet of snow. I don't know that I can believe that, but I'm sure it was quite a bit of snow, and I'm sure that the avalanche that followed it was a pretty big deal. <clears throat> I'm going to focus in on Kerwin in just a moment. On the actual town, you can see it. Uh, looks like there was an attempt to resurrect the town in the uh, 20s and 30s. <coughs> there was even a mining company that wanted to come in here in the 60s. It didn't happen. Environmentalists stopped it. This is September 25th. Yeah, it's still three months till Christmas, and yes, it's snowing out. It's about 34 degrees right now. I'm a little concerned about it getting any colder in the roads freezing up. This was 34 miles out into the middle of nowhere. And this is the town of Kerwin. You can see there are still buildings standing. The tall one I guess might have been a hotel, might have been the uh, um, minor superintendent's home. I'll take a walk over there and figure it out. I'll zoom in. Here we are zooming in. go around in my truck. No, no snow on it yet, but I'm a little concerned. If you look up the hill, the snow is accumulating. I'll zoom out. You can see it white up on the hill, maybe about 200 feet above me. So it might be a degree or two cooler up there. You can still see some yellow on the uh, trees, aspens, cottonwoods. And this is me. I know I'm nuts. I'm crazy. But uh, I'm going to take a walk over into Kerwin and I'll take you with me. Is that alright? So this is Kerwin. I don't quite know what these buildings were. This might have been where somebody lived. I'm up and around. Maybe this was the hotel. Town lived for about 20 years. So it was founded in the late 1880s or in the mid 1880s. A little bit out of breath. Up at about 9,200 feet. Also not quite used to the temperature. It's only about 50 degrees cooler than yesterday. Yesterday was in the 80s. I'm sure in a couple days it'll be back up around 70. <clears throat> so this town had a post office, saloons, hotel, and of course a bunch of miners, huts, and things like that. Fire service took it over, I think in the 60s. They probably ought to get some placards out here to explain things. They've obviously boarded off the cabins to keep people out. Including the windows. That building right there might be an outhouse. At least be my guess. I don't think somebody'd live in that. That might have been a miner's cabin. 
This looks like part of the mining equipment. <clears throat> and again, this was all pretty much undone in 1907 with a major avalanche. There's one of the original cabins, walk right up to it, into it. A little dark. Hopefully you can see. Looks like the way this was set up, maybe they had horses in here. These look like horse stalls. It's kind of sort of, to me, looks like a barn. see snow is starting to stick to the ground considering I had to cross a couple of rivers literally and uh, there is this precipitation coming down I don't want to st spend too too much time up here but this is pretty cool just think 200 people were living here at one time <laughs> This is 34 miles from the town of Matitsu, which is a town of only 300 and some odd people. So, not exactly a metropolis in itself. Matitsu is 30 some odd miles away from Cody, which is a town of 9,000. So, as I continue my tour of some of the most rural places in America, I don't know enough about mining to really know what's going on with this. I do know it's looking pretty sharp up here with a little bit of snow collecting on the on the hillside. It's too uh, too low visibility to kind of figure out where that avalanche came from. And my gut tells me it came in from this direction. I suspect there's much higher hills. I read that this is surrounded by 12,300 foot hills. That sure does look like a hotel. Definitely the most majestic building standing around here. Not sure if this is just too small for what a miner would live in. It does look like a cabin that somebody might have lived in. I'll come back, but it's maybe six feet by six feet or something. I don't know if I trust the floor. It is pretty square and it's probably about six feet. So it might be just enough for a man to lie down in and sleep. Not much else. Tough life for the miners, I'm sure of that. Couple more folks showing up that makes me feel better they got to cross the river without any adventure and here's another cabin the remnants of it roofs falling in you got a couple of trees growing out of it full-size trees but this cabin's a bit larger probably three times the size maybe a 20-foot wall I'll get a little distance on it You're looking at real live American history. Built here with materials that were driven in from Cody, which was 70 miles. And I'll tell you, the 30 mile drive from Matitsu was no 
uh, picnic. And this is in a modern truck on roads that are about as modern as you can make them. Not that they're real modern. I can only imagine what these people dealt with. And again, you're looking at September 25th and you see what the weather is like. Uh, there's another structure up here on the hill. That's the one I suspected might have been the superintendent's home. Again, there's no markers here. So I'm going to pause the video and maybe catch it up when I get a little closer to it. Okay, I'm up to the house. Pretty much does look like a house, uh, not a hotel. And uh, I did read there was a superintendent's home, so maybe this is it. This is a cellar area. Too dark to see anything. Um, the stairs look like they've been restored. So, yeah, solid. Starting to collect some snow and ice on the steps. Not good. Yeah, this wood is solid. A couple of idiots decided to carve into the wood. But it's dated 2013, that's a good sign. Yeah, the floor here is reinforced. The entrance to the home is cut off. Quite a nice place actually for being in the middle of nowhere. Large, well insulated, beautiful backyard. <laughs> Take a walk back around here to the front. It's a couple of windows. They've restored the stairs inside. You can kind of see there was an upstairs. Uh, there's nothing else inside. No sign of a stove, but I'm sure there was one. A pot belly stove or something. And it does overlook the town quite well. Boy, the snow's settling in. So I decided to walk around and down this path since the stairs, even though there is a railing, stairs are pretty steep and they're getting snow and ice covered. Didn't think that would be a real good move if I decided to fall and slip and get hurt here. This is not a place you want to get stuck. <clears throat> you can see, just in a few minutes I've been here, everything's turning white. It's starting to look like a snowstorm. These towns tended to be fairly compact. No need to sprawl all the way out. I'm walking to what would be the north edge of town. It looks like there's one more building out here that's at least still standing. A couple buildings. <laughs> As I get out here and I can see it. Now with the snow on the ground, it's getting a little harder to find the puddles. Fortunately, it's an arid area, so there aren't too many puddles. This looks like another... This is a 
horse stall or something behind a nicer home same thing well this is an outhouse see the pits I don't really want to go in there and see if there are any remnants now this is a nice looking home it's coming up on it from the outhouse and the horse stall behind so again this is probably somebody who was living pretty well maybe this is the investors home again sealed off maybe someday the forest service will get some money and open these up so people can go through and do it in a way that it won't destroy the building the roof has clearly been replaced but the walls the outer dwelling looks uh you know pretty uh original i'll keep the camera on it as i walk away from it so you can see the full expanse of the place and again look at the neighborhood 